<sighs> what did you say? I'm made of metal. But I'm made of metal. I'm made of metal. All right, all right, you have a point. Let's find out more about you. Hello everyone, how are you? This is Diabetic Cycling coming at you once again. This is a channel sponsored by my wallet and brought to you by your engagement. So please do subscribe and hit the like button and ask me any questions, leave any comments down below. So let's get straight onto the review. Okay, so in this review, I wanna actually start by saying that I personally have affinity towards a brand or company that still bears the name, the founder's name on the door, on the door so to speak. And that's because uh, like the Linsky that I'm gonna show you today, Linsky family is still very much involved with the brand and when your name is on the door like that so to speak, you just care more, right? And uh, that speaks volume, um, at least I'm concerned. Now, it is important to actually mention another brand when we talk about Linsky, and that is Lightspeed. So maybe you haven't even heard of Linsky, but you might have heard Lightspeed. So um, Mr., I think it's David, David Linsky, uh, started the brand Lightspeed uh, some decades ago, but I believe it was in the late 90s where he sold the company to a larger company Coincidentally, I actually had a light speed uh, right around that time. I forget if the model was Ultimate or Tuscany, but it's one of the two. Anyhow, so um, Mr. Linsky sold the company light speed to this other company, and then um, I believe there maybe there was a uh, couple years of a non-compete agreement in place. So 
um, or maybe he just used some time to prepare for the next chapter in his uh, bike business. So um, some years later, the company Linsky, which bears his actual name, was started and since then um, the company has been producing titanium bikes as we know today. And as with uh, most other bike companies, Linsky currently produces road, gravel, mountain bikes, so, so on and so forth. So that brings us to the Model R500, which is the one that I ride and own. And um, the very first thing that I really want to say is the incredible attention to detail in this frame set when you look top to bottom, left to right. When you talk about made in USA quality, it is none more recognizable than what you see on this frame. So the Model R500 appealed to me for a couple of different reasons. Titanium being this uh, classic tried and true material that's been around for so long, but also at the same time, this model has all the modern appointments like the drop the C stays, along with its signature feature, I would say, which is the diamond shaped tubing, which you will find on the top tube and the down tube. So the material titanium um, is commonly known for this superior ride quality. So material lends itself very well to your endurance bikes. That said, this Model R500 does not apologize one bit for not being an endurance uh, focused bike, but it's all out, out and out racing bike, which Linsky calls it pro racing bike on their own. All right, so I haven't checked the current pricing, but back in springtime, I guess, uh, I believe the suggested retail price was $2,800. They had it on sale for $2,200. And then I found the coupon for 25% off, which they uh, offered at the same time. So the frame set plus the carbon four came out to be $1,599. I believe they actually sell similarly equipped bike. Uh, maybe the wheels will be a little different, but right around little hair over 5,000 is what you can uh, get this bike from Linsky directly as a full complete bike. But I just bought the frame set uh, for $15.99 and which is a great deal if you really think about it. Made in USA, Chattanooga, Tennessee. I mean, come on now. Okay, let's talk a little bit about titanium. So titanium does not rust like steel. It does not fatigue like aluminum. So it's basically, it has all these characteristics of other metal frames yet suffers from none of the other disadvantages. So um, it has the right quality of a steel frame. It's light like aluminum and the material is just I mean, it's an aerospace grade titanium that you're gonna see on this frame. What is, what's there not to like? So this particular frame set is built with what they call 6.4 alloy. So that's a six part aluminum, four part vanadium, vanadium, I don't know how you pronounce that, um, over more cheaper kind of titanium alloy that you would find, which would be three by two and a half, which is three parts aluminum and then uh, two and a half part vanadium. Uh, however you pronounce that second material. Anyhow, so uh, that just means the uh, six four variant has a, a stronger tensile strength lending to even more stiff ride quality. Okay, so that brings us to the build of my bike. So mostly uh, my bike is built with the new Shimano Altegra Di2 12 speed, which is the particular group that, that I'm in love with right now. Um, there's a couple other smaller bits that are outside of that, which we will talk about later on. And I've gone with the Altegra because uh, you basically get all of the performance benefit of the Dura Ace, which costs twice more, uh, 200 grams lighter at really half the price. 
Okay, so there are three other components that uh, you might have caught by now, which I will talk a little bit about. So I uh, have Absolute Black's graphene brake pads, front and uh, rear, which I will have a separate episode later on in terms of how I feel about those. But um, so the Absolute Black graphene brake pads handle my braking. And then another blingy part is the uh, oversized pulley wheel that you see. Uh, that's also from Absolute Black and um, I'm not someone that chases this one watt over um, 30 mile per an hour average for 40 miles type of a marginal gain. I'm not, I'm not into that. So the reason why I have that um, is actually for YouTube. If it wasn't for YouTube where I'm creating content, I probably wouldn't have gotten that. But uh, more on that, again, on a separate episode down the road, how I feel about oversized pulley wheels. Quick uh, spoiler alert, I'm, I've never been impressed with the uh, concept of oversized pulley wheel, despite the fact that larger diameter of the pulley wheel creating less friction on your chain. Um, but I mean, I, believe into that whole notion however the application and real life gains i've never been a believer and as far as what i feel about uh, how i feel about it i'll share that with you later on the third and final bit that's uh, slightly um you know customized on, on based on my preference would be the nvses 4.5 wheel set that I'm rolling on which is shot with the NVSES tires running 27 mil up at the front uh, 29 mil in the rear and I bet you the 29 mil in the rear is uh, wider as it sits than 29 mil at this point okay then uh, the saddle that you see right here is a Sele Italia SLR Superflow Boost it's the one with the uh, cutout in the middle it's absolutely my favorite uh, saddle as of um, you know today uh, several years back I swore by physique uh, then I moved on to this phase where harder is better um, saddle so I was running on um, what were they i forget the names but that's not important and uh, last couple of years maybe uh, maybe last one year or so i'm swearing by the um Sella italia slr superflow boost saddles so that's what's on there uh the seat post is a yeah uh, i believe it's fsa it's just something i had uh laying lying around in my garage in the parts bin and then the cockpit. So you might have seen the Linsky R500 in a couple episodes earlier, which I'll link right here when I reviewed Far Sports F1S integrated handlebar. Uh, Cause that was the handlebar that was mounted on this bike. So it made an appearance back then. But since then I actually mentioned in that episode how I didn't like the Far Sports FS1, F1S bar. Um, so since then I have replaced it with a zero model name is a zero from company Windspace. It's a 38 mil wide, I'm sorry, 38 centimeter wide and then hundred mil, uh, stem length. So uh, pretty standard, uh, 38 is basically where I'm finding myself uh, pretty comfortable nowadays as uh, a lot of people are kind of uh, gearing towards a slightly narrower bar, or can I make an argument that uh, maybe that's the right width for my build, whereas a lot of stock bikes, when you buy them from the store or consumer direct brand, they will typically pair and spec handlebars that are just too wide than the size that you're buying. I mean, I've seen like a 42 centimeter handlebars on the small bike, size of small bikes, which is just asinine. Anyhow, so I've been riding on a Windspace Zero uh, handlebar, which actually is uh, faring with me a lot better than the Far Sports. So that's the build. And then all importantly, I, I'm never a person that really pays attention to bike's weight, but because you might be interested, I'll share with you. So as you see built, 
um, that includes the uh, ride ready components such as the um, out front mount and uh, cages, bottle cages and my Time RXS pedals on there. The bike weighs more than 19 pounds. All right, then inevitably in every one of these bike review episodes, people ask me how tall I am, what my inseam length are. If I get another one of those, Um, so all kidding aside, I, you know, inseam length and the, your height will just get you to the nearest zip code. That's not going to get you the proper GPS coordinate in terms of what your fitment will be like on a bike. So I'm just going to share with you. This is a small frame, uh, which would be equivalent of a maybe 51 centimeter. And then um, I've already shared with you what my cockpit dimensions are. And then um, in terms of uh, why I went with that uh, frame size. So I'm somewhere between, I'm going to find myself a pretty happy if my reach is anywhere from 377 to about 385, give and take a mil or two. And then my stack, I'm pretty happy anywhere from 520 to about 533-ish, depending on what type of bike it is. This bike has 527 stack and 370 eight reach so it falls right in the sweet spot of uh, my uh, measurement so it fits perfectly and you really need to pay attention to the stack and reach numbers when you are especially buying bikes without uh, being able to sit on one basically sight unseen because that there will tell you whether the frame will fit or not much less than your height and inseam length. I'm 5'10", but I'm all torso. My legs are you know, basically shorter than they should be. And you being 5'10", with a shorter torso, all long legs, will have a different fit on a bike and your bike should be specced a little bit differently. That's why stack and reach numbers are important. All right, that brings us to the next section, which is the design and aesthetics. So, so as far as, you know, titanium, let's talk before we go into design and aesthetics so let's talk about what the titanium appearance gives you so it's certain level of a style and kind of a panache because you're showing up with a metal bike when you know your friends are showing up by the way some of my friends call carbon frames a plastic um, i don't know if i would go as um extreme nor am i a steel is real bro Kind of a guy um i'm a i'm you know it guy so i embrace technology i'm an early adopter i got nothing against modern day development like carbon frames and such um, but i mean you show up to a ride with a titanium framed bikes i mean it's you know sea of a black naked carbon bikes that you're gonna see out there like the cannondales and the tarmacs and the madones and you're out there with a shiny metal frame bike um, you know maybe you have a bit of a different style you roll a little bit differently and there's a certain level of uh, panache there like i said earlier and I mentioned a little bit earlier, so the, um, the bike is uh, designed with this uh, titanium tubing 6x4, uh, uh, the titanium alloy and made in USA, Ch uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, speaks uh, quality volume there. And then when you look at the bike, what it reminds me of, especially how it, what, what its stance looks like, it's, is none other than of fighter jet. I mean, it shiny, it stands there with this very aggressive look. And like I mentioned earlier, this is not your typical titanium endurance focused bike. This is, it sits very aero up at the front end uh, with a short uh, head tube and I've got my cockpit slammed. So I'm uh, very low uh, up at the front end and the bike just has a bike, uh, the head tube angle is 72 and a half. It just sits a super aggressive, almost again, looking like a fighter jet. 
And of course you could get this from Linsky by paying a little bit extra money like other blingy finish like a different um, badge head, uh, head to badge options anodized brushed I mean so you could have it looking much different than how I have mine I just went with the most the cheapest um, available which would be the bare bone um, frame option and again I think that actually is the spirit of titanium frame bike and I really love of the appearance there now that said i've seen anodized and other like a blingy finish from some of the other homies that i ride with uh, like the firefly company they do super job with the appearance of their bikes uh, number 22 they also create some beautiful titanium bikes um, and newcomer blackheart i think that's they're, they're actually right here in the west coast in california so um you could get this bike with a different blingy finish as well. And then Linsky, of course, calls their diamond shaping something that uh, creates uh, stiffer and um, you know better power output and something. I mean, what bike company right now markets their company as uh, noodly and you know robs of your power? Nobody does that. Everybody says it's stiff, power output, blah blah blah. Okay, so um, yes, it's very stiff. And like I mentioned earlier, the alloy that is used to create the bike's framing, um, higher tensile strength uh, renders to very stiff frame. It's metal for crying out loud. So there you have it. As far as a power output bottom bracket, again, titanium solid tubing, zero flex there. So in, whether it has stiffer bottom bracket or not isn't something I can tell you compared to other carbon uh, bikes of other companies which are very stiff but there is zero issue with the frame set being noodly because it's not and then titanium itself is very hard material to work with right it uh, requires expert level welding skills it's just a material that isn't easy to work with which is why you might not see um, much cheaper knockoffs or uh, something to that nature it just requires a higher uh, labor skills to work with this uh, material altogether and then obviously that leads to this impeccable welding job which i mentioned earlier like attention to detail is incredible here so the welding is absolutely perfection as you would expect from a usa frame and then um like they have this uh, like small little touches here and there that really makes the frame special so like on the chain stay on the left hand side they have it uh, shaped just so right for all the internal cabling and the brake rotors and so on and so forth on the right hand side of the c-stay they have this uh, c-stay it's hard for me to show you on the camera because it's hidden behind the uh, crank set but they have this uh, section shaped in certain way so the uh, the crank set would fit nicely and then um, i haven't had any uh, heel strike on the uh, chain stay on this frame um, and then your seat stays are this s bend that they have now i personally don't like the s bend the seat stays i would rather see um, just a straight line c stays but Nonetheless, uh, they say they did that for compliance. And of course the C-stays themselves are dropped. So it introduces um, length here for the seat post to swing back and forth. And that's just currently how we talk about compliance on the rear end anyways. So that's what that is. And I find comfort to be zero issue. I'm very comfortable on this bike uh, on long haul rides. But the overall, I am really, really impressed and also really like its racy disposition. I am not a bike racer, but should you be one, I mean, just look at the way it stands. It is aggressive and it is fast. It, and when I say fast and, you know, I want to quantify, I want to be able to quantify it and Basically, it all comes down to the power transfer. So whatever you're spinning, there is nothing that is lost anywhere because of a frame's imperfection or poor design. All right, so that now brings us to how it rides. So 
the big question here is why titanium? And like I said earlier, a lot of companies are right now using titanium to build their endurance bikes because again, the material lends itself to be a good fit for that because synonymous, what is synonymous with titanium is the ride quality, how it doesn't fatigue you, how um, it rides like steel, comfortable and all of that. So I might have a slightly different take on that whole notion. Now, this is my third ti uh, titanium bike. Like I said, a couple decades ago, I've had a light speed bike. And then several years ago, I also had another light speed frame, which I rode as a one by as a road bike. So this is my third. And each time, I'm not sure if I felt and agreed with this uh, common notion that it has this uh, you know much different ride quality and or it being more stiffer than say carbon so i might have a little bit different take inevitably some will say how titanium rides smoother i think that is true to a certain degree but it's not what it's all about. So, you know, even the bike that you see as here, I mean, my seat post is carbon, my cockpit is carbon, my fork is carbon. So by the time the full system comes along, you got advantages and benefits from all components and material that come together as a whole bike and that's what it le what's giving you the end result right and so all the carbon bits here will also contribute to your compliance and you know all the jittery small micro vibrations that's going to be eaten up by the fork and my integrated cockpit and my seat post that's giving me uh, the carbon seat post that's gonna give me some compliance there as well. So is titanium that much more smoother than carbon? I don't know, especially with modern day carbon layup schedule and the way companies are engineering their carbon frames. So, I'm, and I've been on many, many carbon framed bikes that are equally smooth. So, I'm not going to sit here and tell you titanium rides smoother because I cannot quantify that. Neither would I be able to say that it's more stiff. Every company right now makes their bike more stiff than previous years. So to say this is a stiffer than brand A or brand B's carbon offering I don't know because modern carbon bikes are plenty stiff, especially ones made with the high modulus, high grade um, carbon. So is it more stiff? It's not not stiff. It's not not stiff as in it's metal, bro. It's very stiff. So that all said, in conclusion, I still want to say that I really like what the bike and how the bike rides, which is why I keep coming back. Um, um, so the way I would describe to you how the bike rides is that it glides on the road. Uh, I don't know if that's a really accurate statement, but that's what it feels like. It feels like it hovers. It feels like it's just gliding on the road. That's how I would uh, ca um, characterize the ride quality of this bike. So while I can't tell you whether this bike rides better than aluminum frame bikes, steel frame bikes, or carbon frame bikes, what I could tell you is this. There is something romantic about having a bike built like this, riding a bike like this, that is made out of metal tubing, that's welded, uh, cables are exposed, and one that just rides so sublime, there's just something different about riding a bike like this. 
Despite me continuing to say this particular bike isn't really built for endurance despite the material titanium being used, um, I'm finding it absolutely no issue on long haul rides or even short punchy stuff. And it's almost kind of a cliche, but I mean, again, no company makes bad bikes right now. This bike, again, has uh, displays uh, traits such as it has impeccable handling. It's uh, precise. It's um, very predictable and it's a handling characteristics with um, ride quality that would come from titanium and all the other carbon bits so it's everything modern yet pays homage to yesterday's material so this is a fantastically riding bike i feel at home when i'm on this bike is that because I, this is my third titanium bike and i keep coming back to one i don't know but i just feel like i can do anything on this bike i mean uh, for something long haul something punchy and short it just doesn't matter it just gobbles up whatever wherever my front wheel is pointed at Obviously, I've owned a couple dozen bikes in my lifetime, some more expensive, some more fancier, but this bike really handles everything that I throw at it um, with certain panache. There's that word again. All right, so that brings us to the conclusion. So let me talk about whether titanium is better. I think it, I don't think it's really discussing whether it's better or not it's identifying the subtle difference it's a bit different it's not better or worse it's a bit different and whatever the differences that exist i might want to argue that it's getting narrower and narrower and narrower each year as engineers learn how to better lay up carbon and tune the right characteristics of those bikes and of course the carbon frames would be uh, most likely lighter than the titanium frame so the differences are there um, not sure at you know year 2023 if the differences combine if the differences really add up to that much being different so the racy disposition of this particular uh, bike really defies the current trend of how titanium is being used and it makes no apology being as such a bike but i'm glad it exists in the sea of carbon bikes with bunch of gimmicks what i would categorize as it's just a straight up bike with a traditional shape tubing cables not integrated it's just as classic as something can get and yet it has all the quality modern appointments so you know i would even argue that every bike rider at some point in your life should own and ride and experience a titanium bike because not because it's better or worse but because it's somewhat different now, in every bike ep review episode that I uh, put out, I sort of make this douchey analogy of what the bike rides in terms of what, what, what a comparable car would be. So this bike here, I would compare to that of a couple of two different, couple of different cars. I would compare this to like a Porsche Panamera as in it has this classy look but it's very nimble and it's very eager and it's very stable at the same time yet it's quite aggressive and another analogy that i would make is i guess made in usa so i would go something like a cadillac cts v and i don't mean cadillac from the 70s with a long wheelbase and something sluggish this is the cadillac cts v that's sporting the corvette v8 in there that is just a screaming beast that's what i would consider this bike something like a panamera or cts v and i don't think i'm wrong on that front it is a fun bike it is a great bike and it is one that i've been telling my friends and my wife that it's most likely the bike that i would retire with whenever 
the year comes when I hang up my wheels. This would be the one that I just retire with and just ride around until I can't pedal any more. Of course, one could never tell the future, so who knows? In the end, this is a bike that will last you for years and years and years to come. And it will look after you for all those years. You could do a lot worse than going with a titanium framed quality bike that's made in USA as such as this. All right, that wraps up this episode, you guys. As always, I've been very mouthy. Hopefully, um, if you've stuck around this long, thank you very much. All right, so that wraps it. I've been Diabetic Cycling. You've been awesome. Until next time, make sure to keep the rubber side down and be good humans. DC out.